What's good, YouTube? It's Jay, and I'm back again tonight with another video. Tonight is a very important video that goes with the CVP and the PAP as we're talking about hemodynamics. Now, we don't have a lot of time, so we're going to get right into this lesson. Are you ready to go? Let's do this. So tonight we are continuing our hemodynamic parameters with pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and cardiac output. So if you will look to the left of the screen, Roman number one, two, and three, and then we'll be done. I'll work from the left to the right. Now the normal PCWP is eight. Eight is that target value, but there's a range of 7.9 millimeters of mercury. And these things are essential for the exam. We go and we eliminate all of the other reading for you and show you things that we may probably will pop up on the exam. To get a PCWP measurement, it's taken with the balloon on the pulmonary artery catheter or the swan gang catheter inflated. And as soon as you get that reading, that balloon is deflated. Remember that. The pulmonary capillary wedge pressure relates to a problem on the left side of the heart. Now, the PCWP is also called and will show up on the exam as something other than PCWP. They may even call it PWP, but it's called pulmonary venous drainage. It's called left atrial pressure. It's called left ventricular filling pressure. It's called left preload and left ventricular end diastolic preload. Remember those terms. It's imperative that you know how blood circulate uh, through the body. We don't talk about that because it takes too long to discuss in this lecture. What we're talking about is content for the TMC exam, and we try to help you in that regard. And Roman number two, I'm gonna give you some example of how this works. If there's a problem in the lungs, you will have to look at two pressures, one before the heart, which was the PAP, and the one after the heart, which is the PCWP. You must know two pressures when it comes to hemodynamic interpretations. Now, I'm gonna lead all of the reading to you so you understand that these are things that are gonna show up on the exam. Now, how would you know if there is a problem in the left heart? Well, the PCWP is before the left heart and cardiac output is after the left heart. So you always look at the pressure before and after the anatomy that we're looking for the problem in. Now, when you are interpreting hemodynamic value, always keep them in order and keep this in mind. Even though the NBRC won't list them in this order, CVP, PAP, PCWP, and cardiac output, they won't list them in that order on the exam. But you have a scratch paper. Whenever you come to interpreting hemodynamic value, you put them in this order and then you start to interpret them because they will be misplaced on the exam just to throw you off. There are problems in the left heart that you should look for, such as mitral valve stenosis, congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema, and high peak from positive pressure ventilation. These are problems that you will find in the left heart and will show up on the exam. Now, when we talk about cardiac output, Roman number three, the normal for cardiac output is four to eight liters a minute. And remember, cardiac output is a volume, not a pressure. Cardiac output and cardiac index go hand in hand on this exam. Normal range for a cardiac index is 2.5 to four, all right? which means that cardiac index is just one half of cardiac output. Now, for the exam, there's a calculation that you need to be familiar with when it comes to cardiac index because your cardiac index is actually cardiac output divided by body surface area. Cardiac output also will show up as stroke volume time heart rate. Your cardiac output relates to problem where? Cardiac output problems are in the left heart. What are those problems? Mitral valve stenosis, congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema, or high peak. Now, what are the treatment options for a problem that we see on the left side of the heart? Well, you can normally give allotrophic or chronotrophic types of drugs, which is familiar to us. They would be digitalis or digoxin. You will see those on the exam. There are some very important information on this board as it relates to TMC essentials for the TMC exam. 
I hope that you screenshot the board while I'm not standing there so that you can either play the recording over or go back and read this information again. But if you know nothing else before this exam or before you sit for this exam, you need to know this. You need to know what hypervolemia is and you need to know what hypovolemia is. And I list them down under there for a reason. One is overhydration and one is dehydration. And I wish you well. So this is pulmonary capillary wear pressure and the cardiac output essential for the TMC exam. And there you have it. Okay, guys, I'm back. Now we have talked about the central venous pressure. We have talked about the pulmonary artery pressure. We just talked about pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. And we're talking about cardiac output and cardiac index. Now you need to bring them all together and then you will have all of this information needed for the TMC exam. Now I wish you well, and I hope that you take this information into consideration. Guys, listen, I'm working hard to earn your subscription and I hope that we can accomplish that somewhere down the line. But if you would hit that like button, share with others, and I ask that you would subscribe to my channel, turn on your post notification because I'm still giving out one or two videos every week. And as always, until next time, we out.